questions for oral answer, and the first question stands in the name of Dr. Russell Norman. Mr. Speaker, thank you. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks. Does he agree with 57% of New Zealanders who, according to a recent UMR poll, support the introduction of a temporary earthquake levy to pay for the rebuilding of Christchurch? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, paying for the rebuilding of Christchurch is not a simple choice of either introducing a levy or funding it through debt, which was one of the choices put to respondents in that poll. The Government is, in, of course, in effect already borrowing to pay, for example, for the welfare needs of Christchurch residents and to ensure rebuilding can begin quickly. So the Government has to borrow initially. The question is how the money is paid back. What we do agree on is that New Zealanders want to see the burden of rebuilding Christchurch shared and not just fall on Christchurch residents. I would note when the, when the question was put a different way to respondents in the same poll, 40 per cent of respondents favoured the Greens levy plan, while a total of 51 per cent of respondents preferred that either the government borrow or favoured cuts in expenditure. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. In light of yesterday's uh, financial statements of the government showing the Crown's in a worse than expected fiscal position, will he take this opportunity to reconsider a levy rather than going further into debt to pay for the rebuild? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, as I say to the member, the reality is that we do have to go into debt because the money needs to be spent now and then it's about uh, paying it back later. Uh, but I would also point out now, that the Government has decided it's going to have a strong focus on its own expenditure and make sure that it's all uh, spent well on taking what reprioritisation that's possible rather than a levy. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is he concerned that a big increase in government debt could lead to a credit downgrade? And does he agree that a credit downgrade will add significantly to households' mortgage payments? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, of course the government would be concerned if there was a blowout in government debt, which is why it's so to budget right and make sure that we prioritise all our expenditure properly uh, and to minimise the impact on our overall debt. Entry. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree that every dollar raised by a temporary earthquake levy is one dollar less in borrowing, and every dollar less in borrowing reduces the risk of a credit downgrade and hence higher mortgage payments for New Zealand householders? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have some trouble with members' premise on behalf of the Minister of Finance because he seems to think that we should just ignore what we're spending already and just go out and get uh, people to write us cheques for more money. And I think the government's taking a view which it wants to make sure that it's actually uh, getting the absolute best from the expenditure it's already doing. Uh, the reality also, too, I understand, is that if you do the exercise around the Greens' proposed levy, it would raise, at the best, around $600 million a year, which would mean people in Christchurch would be waiting a long, long time before we would be able to afford the rebuild. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister share the concerns of many economists that government spending cuts, severe government spending cuts, at a time when the economy is already fragile, could result in a renewed recession? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, I, I sort of reject the characterisation of severe spending cuts. The government will be prioritising its expenditure, we will be doing it carefully, and you will have to wait to see the budget. Amy Adams. Supplementary question to the Minister of Finance. How long would the suggested tax levy actually take to fund the costs of the earthquake? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Um, Mr. Speaker, I understand the proposal from the Greens is to raise income taxes of those earning above $48,000. Even ignoring the damage this would do to economic growth and erosion of the tax base, this would raise a total of around $600 million per year. At that, stage, at that rate, it would take about a decade to fund the direct costs of the quake. Uh, and that's, not with, that's notwithstanding the fact that there would also be interest on top of the debt that would have to be borrowed in the meantime. So such a levy could hardly be called temporary. Dr Russell Norman, point uh, of order. I seek leave to table a copy of the Greens proposal which shows that it raises $1 billion per year. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is objection. Dr Russell Norman, supplementary question. <laughs> Too much for you, hey? Order. 
Why, why is the government ignoring the compassionate offer of New Zealanders to chip in to pay for a levy at $1 billion a year, which is a much more fiscally responsible approach and one that avoids the risk of a credit downgrade due to increased borrowing and also avoids the risk of inducing a new recession if there are big spending cuts in this budget? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I know that it's a compassionate offer by the Greens on behalf of a whole bunch of New Zealanders they don't speak for. I think that's largely what's going on here. And that's, that's sort of cool and everything, but the reality is the government believes strongly that we can reprioritise expenditure, and as I say, the budget will be out uh, the uh, middle or end of May or something like that, and uh, the Greens will have a chance to see how the government will do that. Question number two, the 